Welcome back to the Forex Beginner Podcast. It's your boy Calvin, the new trader. We are in the studio, so you know when we're in the studio, we got a special guest in the building. This couple, uh, these two individuals that are here with me today, uh, ran into one of them at FX Summit. And so uh, today, we got uh, Brandon and Sierra in the building. Uh, how y'all doing? I'm doing phenomenal. <laughs> Brandon excited. He was ready to go first. Listen, ready to go for sure. Thanks for having us, though. Thanks it's a pleasure. Us, yes. It's a pleasure. And I'm happy you know, that things worked out. We're here. When we talk about Forex, mm -hmm. what about this? makes you so passionate i've seen on your instagram where you talking to people about what you do i saw you um well i saw you both at fx summit yes. sh just sharing your passion how you got into this where does that come from where does that passion that joy come from in terms of forex yes yeah, so i actually was in a deep dark place in my life like i would say 2018 2017 mm. and there wasn't enough financial literacy like going on about you know what you can do to actually become successful and I actually started on YouTube with watching like Jeremy and um, Swaggy C Doyle and I seen like people like that look like me actually are being successful in the industry of Forex so it's pretty much like making sure like the area that I was in it was pretty much not a great area for me to like li like for my livelihood so it was pretty much like the area of being, you know, dangerous and stuff like that. So I just wanted to have a, a actual way out to get out of that area so that way I can make sure that my family and myself are safe. Yeah. So it was more so that and then also having the freedom and the time to be able to do whatever I want to do at any time and any day. So yeah. I love the fact that I can actually control my finances and do whatever I want to do. Yeah. So, so that's where it came from. Like when was this? What year was this? I want to say it was about 2018, 2018. Wow. wow. 2018. So I had a deep, dark year. It was ridiculous. So I, I said that, you know what? I actually am here for change, even as a young child. Like I was pretty much making sure that I, I had deep visions mm -hmm. of myself being successful coming up. So when I learned about Forex, I was just like, okay, well, this is great because this is a skill set that I can learn and I can take with me for the rest of my life. I'm always intrigued by black women, right? <laughs> so I grew up no father, mm -hmm. um, just watching my mother do whatever she had to do. Mm -hmm. My grandmother lived with us whole life, right? So I'm watching my grandmother clean. She was a housekeeper mm -hmm. for a very prominent uh, Jewish lawyer, I believe he mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. or judge, either or, or maybe both. Um, but anyway... At some point, he was a lawyer, and maybe he became a judge. But anyway, I watched my grandmother go. She would cook for their family. Mm -hmm. She basically raised their children, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she would be there all day and then come home late at night, right? Mm -hmm. And then I watched my mom mm -hmm. work. Uh, she was a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm always fascinated when I see black women mm -hmm. going after mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So for you growing up, were you kind of like the loner that always was, had these big visions? I was always like into deep thoughts about what, what my surroundings were. And everybody would just be laughing and giggling and stuff like that. And not to say that I don't have a good time, but it's just more so like I'm the actual goat in the family, like the mm. the, the, the sheep in the family, the mm. black sheep. Yeah, right? yeah. The black sheep of the family. And it's pretty much like I'm the one that's misunderstood, but mm. I have so much knowledge and so much inside of me that I can bring out to any situation, anybody around me that can take them to the next level, really. What were you trying before trading? Like, what was your route to try to be successful? So I actually um, was into drop shipping i was into drop shipping i had a store it was called hottest authority i don't no longer have it now mm. i actually was successful with the store um and i was using my credit card to run ads on the actual store and i'm like i don't want to keep running up my credit card all the way and then you know and then you know the return on investment is not coming in right away because you know you have to take a couple of days or so to get the um the data and stuff like that mm -hmm. so i'm like okay well um i was actually in stocks at the time as well and pretty much just my friend Rebecca, she actually was showing me her portfolio. She was up like $17,000. I got very much intrigued and pretty much I was like, okay, well, can you teach me this and stuff like that? So I got into Tesla, Delta, um, Disney, every stock that you can think of, I got into it. I got a return on investment. And then someone um, from an MLM company reached out to me and she was like, hey, do you want to learn about Forex? And I'm just like, 
um, sure, because I'm already into stocks. And then she was telling me you can buy and sell. And I'm like, oh, wow, you can make your money a, a little bit more quicker. So she actually um, ended up, you know, uh, allowing me to join the company. I paid to join the company and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then after I joined the company, um, it wasn't for me. So, yeah. um, but with me actually joining, and I'm so thankful for um, joining the company. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah, I am Academy. We just might as well just yeah. kill the elephant in the right. room for everybody. You know, yeah. that's where yeah. that's where we all got started. You know, if it's one yeah. thing they did well, they, they did introduced it. us to yes. the skill set. Yes. If it's one thing they yes. did, they definitely did that. And the thing about <laughs> the thing about I did like about IML, it was so many people that looked like us yeah, and, and involved in it. So yeah. I was so much, in, I was very intrigued. So I actually um, went through her following. Um, my recruiter, she, I went through our following. I found two people that were actually showing withdrawal, showing that they were making profit and stuff like that. So I actually ended up joining their, they actually ended up leaving IML, mm. started their own business. They got kicked out of IML at that wow. because they were actually, you know, getting more people to join them because yeah. they were actually teaching. They were actually teaching. Actually <laughs> Chris wanted. Terry, like, if yeah. I ain't getting a piece of that, you out. <laughs> yeah. So it was actually teaching. And, and so um, I basically took, my mentor's uh, strategy, uh, Mike and JP, I mm -hmm. took their strategies and it took me a while to like combine it, combine it both together. Mm -hmm. But it took us, I, I would say it took me like about a year to combine their strategies both together. And I was learning market structure and I was learning technicals and stuff like that. So I basically took what they taught me and put it in my own little spin mm -hmm. and that made me successful. Boom. And then after that, I pretty much, um, I was working a job. I was working at FPNL. Okay. Um, the Florida Power and Light Company. Yeah. And then you was making some good money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you was doing pretty good. Yeah. So, um, so I would I would be at work actually like you know trading and working at the same time. It was pretty pretty much where I was like I gotta make this work. I have to make this work. I don't like staying at this job all the way through during the day and I have nothing else to do. And as soon as I get home, I'm tired. I have to go work out and stuff like that. And my whole day is gone. I'm like if I can find something that can actually replace my time. You know, and actually, actually, uh, I can actually make more money mm -hmm. during the same hours. Mm -hmm. Like that's great. Yeah. So, um, so pretty much as I was learning and you know trading at work and stuff like that, I had a rough year. My first year, I had a yeah. rough year. I had blown accounts. Okay. How many? I uh, I want to say about a good thirteen. Wow. A, a good thirteen. How accounts. much money you think was lost? Like if you could just I, guess. I, I would say about a good ten thousand. Wow. A good first 10, 000, year. Yeah. A good ten thousand dollars. I was so stressed because I was actually trying to move out of my mom's house. I was trying to move out of her house, and I was basically taking my check and putting it to the market, blowing it, putting it to the market, blowing it, putting it to the market. I mean, I would be mm. at my job sliding down the walls, crying, <laughs> snot bubbles coming down, everything <laughs> like that. I would be sliding down feeling. the wall like yeah. I was in a movie, yeah. okay, and big old <laughs> snot bubbles coming out. <laughs> I know that feeling. Because I was just sick. I was just like, why is it not working for me? And I, yeah. and I just knew the end goal was, you know, this can be blue. This can actually be profit. So I'm like, I just need to see what I was doing wrong. I actually mm -hmm. ended up um, basically writing down all of my um, errors of what I was doing in the market and basically like, seeing what I kept doing continuously over and over again, I saw the same pattern. Mm. I said, and as so soon as I switched that, I was able to see the profit. I was wow. able to see more blue screens like that. So after that, um, um, at 2020, I got profitable. It was the year of COVID. The market was selling tremendously for basically for the whole year. And then after that, then 2021 of April, I had quit my job. And then I had one customer that actually signed up literally the, right in the the very next day after I had quit. Mm -hmm. um, and she was like, hey, what are you doing? What, are you going to like, you know, what are you going to do after work? And I'm just like, I'm going to trade for myself. And she's like, oh, can you teach me? And I'm like, yeah, sure, I could teach you. And then sh after that, um, basically her first month, she made $2,000 off of what I taught her. Wow. And then um, I ended up starting a, a business called Rising Currency. I started my own business. And then pretty much I had a whole bunch of students that came through, wanted to sign up. I started posting her results on Instagram, my mm. results on Instagram. A lot of people inquired. So I got a whole bunch of students that just signed up. And it's pretty much been up from there. 
What's up, traders? Listen, I'm sorry for interrupting today's podcast interview with Brandon and Sierra. Listen, the vibes are in the building. We're having a good time, and we're going to jump right back into this interview in just a second. But I want to talk to you about prop firms and getting funded. We all know that there are many prop firms out there. We all know that the opportunity to trade other people's capital is the easiest way to become profitable as a trader. However, with so many different changes going on in the prop firm space, you want to find a prop firm that is leveling the plan feel for you to actually get funded and reach that super quick payout. So what has come to my attention is a prop firm called Blue Guardian. All right. Now, Blue Guardian has this amazing technology called the Guardian Protector. All right. And it has me excited because I know for my new beginner and developing traders, sometimes we say in our mind, we're going to trade the right way. And then we take that wrong trade and then everything, all the discipline goes out of the window and we over leverage that next trade and boom, we hit our daily drawdown. But what Blue Guardian, the prop firm is doing is they created something called the Guardian Protector that allows you to go into your back office before you even start taking trades and you can set a limit so that you never hit your daily drawdown limit. It doesn't matter how undisciplined you get in the moment. Once you set that Guardian Protector equity limit, you cannot violate your daily drawdown. And so that allows you to stay in the game. That is leveling the playing field so that you can actually be successful and pass this challenge and get to a quick payout. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're interested in checking out Blue Guardian, which was referred to me by a trading friend, all right, and I'm excited about it, then definitely check out a 10% discount code that they are blessing the Forex Beginner Podcast with. Use New Trader One at checkout. Again, the code is New Trader One at checkout. Link in the description of this podcast episode. And I look forward to catching you at the bank when you get your first prop firm payout. All right. Peace. It's a lot to take out of that. <laughs> so, um, um, and don't worry, Brandon, we coming to you. We just oh, get, no, you know, should. we just start with Sierra, but we coming your way. Hey. So prepare yourself. We coming that way. <laughs> we coming down that road. Uh, so it's, it's a lot there. So mm-hmm. you're trading at work. Mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. how like? stressful that mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. because you're trying to focus on what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But in the back of your mind, you're thinking, is that thing down? Mm-hmm. Did it hit my stop? Yep. If it's even a stop loss yes. there. You know, in the yep. beginning, we just trading based off how much we got in the account. Mm-hmm. Yep. Everything is up for grabs. Yep. Yep. You know, everything mm-hmm. up for grabs. Mm-hmm. So you thinking about that mm-hmm. while you're working. Mm-hmm. Did that affect your job performance? And did you get threatened by higher management, higher ups? Like, hey, we're noticing that you're not as productive. No, because uh, I would just run to the bathroom. I would run to the uh, bathroom. <laughs> okay, okay. I would run to the bathroom, and I had a little bit more grace time, like to to be able to like trade. So it wasn't as bad. But I made sure, like, I got my work done at my job first, and then I had all the free time to do it. But even sometimes when I actually did have like people coming up, I'm like, hold on, you gotta wait now, because I'm in a trade. Oh no, this is important. <laughs> but um, but um, but it wasn't too bad where it was like where I had to like cover up or get like penalized for anything like that. So it wasn't bad at all. But I'm I'm just glad that at, in that time frame I was able to do it because it really helped me do more than ten thousand hours at at that. Yeah. You know, with studying and stuff like that. So where were you as far as profits when you made that decision that yeah I'm gonna quit this job like. How much were you making at that time? Do you remember? Like, yeah. what made you feel so so confident to just leave? FPNL is a yeah. bit. Listen, for anybody watching in Florida, you know, <laughs> you get an FPNL job. Yeah. Come on, mama. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, That's some money. So, so yeah. So I was for me comfortably. I was like, okay, if I can make one fifty to two hundred a day, if I can make that a day, then I could pretty much leave my job. So, um. I had stayed, I saved up a, a good cushion before I quit. Mm. So that's smart. That's a smart way to do it. So yeah. it's nothing against a nine to five. You just need to make sure that you save up. If you're, if you are looking to quit, just save up a, a good amount of money. That way, just in case anything fails or anything happens, then you have that cushion to back you up. So I had a good cushion before I left. Um, but I was mentally, um, you know, making sure that if I can have at least 150 to $200 a day that I'm making before I leave, then I'm just going to make sure you basically leave this job and then I'll do that when I get home and I can have all the time of the day in the world to do it. Yeah. So that was pretty much the amount that I needed to. to so leave. were you still living with mom at the time? Yes. Okay. I was still living with my mom. And then after I had, like after I had, after I had, well, it was actually 20, 2020. That's when I had moved into my apartment, like the end of 2020, I moved into my apartment and then 2021, you know, 
I was 2020 before, I would say probably like March, I was already, you know, staying with my mom. But mm -hmm. towards the summer, I already had moved into my apartment. So. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really smart mm -hmm. because I think a lot of times we want to, you know, prove that we got it and we on yeah. top. Mm -hmm. And so I think mm -hmm. it was smart of you like, hey, I'm I'm still with mom. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And and. You know, I only need this much for me. Yep. Like, I'm good. And, of course, I want to help her out a little bit. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> you saw that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Like, now is the time to go for it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's wise. Mm -hmm. You know, like, mm -hmm. if you're in that situation where you can do it, mm -hmm. you you know, take advantage mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to any traders right now? You know, now, like, I tell these these young cats, mm -hmm. like, like, I wish I was 16, 17 mm -hmm. and finding out about mm -hmm. trading. I wish. You know what I mean? So... What advice do you give to like those 17, 18 year olds, those those seniors in high school that's getting ready to graduate? They're getting ready to go to college, but they got an interest in trading. What advice would you give them as far as like taking advantage of the opportunities? Like, OK, you go into class, you got the whole day after that, you right. know, to get into these charts. Like what advice would you give them as far as seizing the opportunity like you did? Yes. So I would definitely inform them to like make sure that you have some whether it's a part-time or a full-time job, make sure you have that so that way you can at least fund for yourself because I'm all about making sure that you can take care of yourself before you can take care of others. Yeah. So make sure that you can have enough money to be able to do what you need to do. And then with trading, then invest into like a course or a mentor like like I did because that was the smartest thing I could, I could ever do. After my mentors actually ended up teaching me, mm -hmm. that actually shortened my learning curve. Mm. It's shortened my learning curve a lot. So the people that I teach now, the students that I teach now, they don't have to go through that rough patch that I went through. Yeah. So learn from someone who already have done it and then, you know, do your research on the person, of course. And then, you know, basically, you know, study from there so that, that way you don't have to take the hard road. I got to ask <laughs> this. So you say that you had two mentors. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you like kind of took something from each strategy, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So. When you decided to go out on your own, mm -hmm. was it a bad breakup from your mentors or was it a no? Uh, they was actually, a neutral no, breakup. No, they were actually ecstatic that oh. I, I, yeah, they actually were ecstatic that I was actually able to you know break off and then you know start my own thing. They I were like actually that. promoting and promoting my business. They were actually like you know supporting me and stuff like that. They mm -hmm. were all like crying tears. Wow. Okay. Because just to see like a student of them to actually be able to like be profitable and start their own business, that means that they did a good job. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Hey, come on. Mm -hmm. If you're in a situation right now and <laughs> you left a trading community yeah. and you know the person leading that community is is mad at you and they hating and they talking yeah. about you, it's a problem there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. Your people should be supporting you and happy. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> that's really good stuff. Uh, somebody needed to hear that. I just feel that in my spirit. Mm -hmm. Somebody watching right now needed to hear that because they in a little situation where they feeling some animosity from their mentor. Mm -hmm. Now you know that person may not be or have your best interest right. in mind. All right? So that's good to know. So what was the process of, because I was in that situation, right? I had mentorship. I started out with mentorship mm -hmm. and shout out to my mentor. Uh, shout out to Clarence. Um, and... I learned some good things there. Mm -hmm. And what I'm seeing now is when I left, I needed to leave mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I'm the type of person that just point me in the right direction. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And I'll find my way. Yep. So I'm not going to say this is a good trait, but for me personally, how I learn, I'm an experienced learner. Mm -hmm. I got to feel the fire. Yep. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so <laughs> that may not be the best trait of a student. Right. But. Right. I got to feel the fire. Mm -hmm. And so when I left my mentor's mentorship, I went out and I brought a bunch of different courses and I wanted to just experience different styles of trading mm -hmm. so that I can just kind of cut some things out and just find something that works for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Happy I did it. Mm -hmm. Right. But it was hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was hard, you know, to kind of mm -hmm. go through, test everything out, take mm -hmm. the, okay. Mm -hmm. That don't work. I don't like trading that way. Yep. Mm -hmm. I like money coming to me. I don't like coming to the market and running behind trades. Like, it's just all this type of stuff, right? Yep. So for you, and that process took me a grueling, you know, like year of just like yep. losing, like mm -hmm. not really making money, mm -hmm. of just really trying to figure things out mm -hmm. until it finally started to click. Mm -hmm. And just recently, like it really started to click mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, I'm not changing nothing. This is what I'm doing mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. So for you, when you were doing that, Luckily, you only had two different strategies mm -hmm, that you were piecing mm -hmm, together. Mm -hmm. What was that process like? So the first year, I had, like I said, 
joining them, I had I was in IML for 2019. Yeah. So I was in IML for like two or three months. Like I said, it wasn't no. Yeah. So and then um It I, was exciting. Yeah. You know, it made you feel good, you know what right. I mean? <laughs> and then um after I had joined them, I like I said, I had some I had to take time in with then like learning what they were actually teaching me. So it didn't just click right away just because they knew what they knew. I had like in that process, I was blowing accounts because I was like, okay, well, let me take this. Let me take that. Let me take that. Like you, like you were saying mm -hmm. too, trying to experience different things. Okay. Seeing what works, seeing what don't work. So, um, basically I had took a whole, I, I want to say like a whole eight months into learning the process of what the market is doing repetitively. Um, one of the mentors was actually teaching uh, market structure. So after I understood market structure, I'm like, okay, well, the market actually are, you know, basically goes in cycles. Mm -hmm. So if I can understand this pattern of what the market is continuously doing and, you know, when news comes out and stuff like that and I can capitalize at 930, the New York Stock Exchange, I'm like, okay, I can really capitalize at these moments because it's highly profitable volatile, yes. But I can actually, you know, profit off of it. So I was like, okay. Well, I see this and this and this work, time and price work, because I traded every session, every session you can think of. The Asian session don't work for me. I don't like the London session too much. Um, but the New York session is primary, like primarily my main session that I trade. I don't mm -hmm. trade really anything else. Except so, New York, right? Yeah. Except New I'm York. learning that now. I'm learning except that New now. York. I'm, lear I'm, I'm really learning except that now. Except New York, because yeah. the way I see it is pretty much like each time frame, I, I'm sorry, each session sets up for the next uh, next session. Correct. The Asian session do, does this one thing, yeah. the London session does this one thing, and then the New York session. That The New York session is towards the end of the day, so mm -hmm. it's pretty much they're trying, the market, the banks, they're trying to just push it all in one direction and just get it over with. Because yeah. it already done went through a cycle, so I'm like, okay, well, I have this one session that I only have to think about. And it's gonna do this one thing, and when I say I call the market out to the teeth off of what I learned, what I when I of what I learned of what Brandon I learned, like boy, you don't even know Brandon is what, like of what I learned when I say the because the market is so repetitive, my brain is like on steroids on wow. how strategic I am with calling it down to the teeth before a month before you can you you name it I wow. can call the market down to the T. I have students that can testament to that. Okay, so, now. So pretty much, I was able to you know take what I learned from market structure, and that was just me going in depth. And I took my time and actually went into it. No one pushed me, forced me to do anything because they were just doing Zoom calls and you, you was on your own. There Correct. was no signals, nothing like that. So I had to go in study. You know, basically every single session, and I, like I said, the Asian session was not for me, the London session was not for me, and the New York session was stuck with me. And that that's when I seen all my profitability, and I was barely taking losses. I had a six-month streak with no losses wow. at all. Wow. At all. Wow. And it's on record, and I can show y'all all of that. Okay? Wow. Okay, now. <laughs> she talking that talk. Okay. Okay, now. All right. All right. So let me ask you this. So I'm realizing that. Mm -hmm. So last night... I got into a trade during London, mm -hmm. and I told myself, Calvin, don't get into this trade into New York, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I got in. I know it's going up. I know it's going up, mm -hmm. right? And so <laughs> my levels are still holding, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But right now we're in a little accumulation. I got to sit through <laughs> it, right? So anyway, um, I told myself, Calvin, mm -hmm. do not get in this trade in London. I told myself that before I got, mm -hmm. well, before I went to sleep. Mm -hmm. I woke up. Mm -hmm. Around 4 a.m., I saw it pulling back and then waking out. I said, you know what? It's a good time <laughs> to probably get in now and, you know, take it up. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm -hmm. I get in. They push it down more. Ooh. It got near my stop loss, but it held. I'm talking like three pips away. It held. Ooh. So I'm still in. I think I'm still in. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's check it out. Let's see where I'm at right now. I think I'm still in. Which pair um, is it? I'm on. This is GBP Chef. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm still in right now. I'm still in right now. All right? So I'm still in right now. So basically, Push what happened, Brandon? No, I'm looking at the charts right now with Nas, and I'm like, oh, oh okay. I thought you were looking at my GBP chef. You know what I'm saying? We're going the opposite way. Up. I'm like, hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> All right. Let me know what you think. We're going to come to you real soon. Let me know what you think, Brandon. When did this hit your mind that let me stick with the New York session? So I was actually taking a lot of, I, I looked at the profitability of what I was actually making and what I was losing. I had noticed that I was already advised not to trade the Asian session. So I that didn't like really register to me. I'm like, the banks is not open. Nothing is really moving. So mm -hmm. the spreads are high. So I'm like, no. Um, the London session, I was up like 
my sleep schedule was crazy because I had to basically get up one, two o'clock in the morning. I'll stay up for the duration of my trade for about a good two to three hours because I'm trading at three to four a.m. Um, so and then basically I'll be able to like make I would be trading GBP AUD, um, GBP USD. Those were, those were successful, but it was moving a little bit slower to me. Um, those were those were pretty great. I, I didn't have any problem with them. It, it just made less money for me for the account size that I had because I was trading like with a two hundred to five hundred dollar account, mm -hmm. and I wanted to see more returns. So I'm like, okay, well I want to get in US thirty in Nas, and those ironically are my favorite two pairs that I like to trade now. Yeah. Um, and then pretty much I seen that I was like taking taking losses a little bit during um, the London session with US thirty and Nas, and I'm like, cause I'm like, if that's my favorite pair. I want to actually trade it when it's actually time to trade it because mm. technically you, you should be take, trading the the index and the indices during the New York session. Correct. That's the session it goes with. Correct. So I'm like, okay, well, if it goes with that session, then let me trade it with that session. I would see I would be taking L's during um, the London session during the um, 3 a.m., 4 a.m. with US 30 and Nas. And I'm like, and in New York, it's actually profitable. I'm like, what? Move out the way. I'm about to trade the New York. <laughs> Telling you. I'm about to trade the New York session, so you know that's it. But it's funny that you mentioned that you're um, actually doing a funding account because I'm actually doing a funding account. Yeah. And just to go ahead and back up what I was stating, mm -hmm. when I say I barely lose. Yeah. Come on, I, come I'm on, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, please. I'm, I'm doing a 100k account right now. Yes. Okay. On with E8 funding. Okay. And look at the win rate, 100% win rate. Come on. I haven't even took a loss on that account. And it's up $2,233. Okay, nah. Okay. Well, I do lose. <laughs> I do lose quite frequently. But I have a good a good risk-to-reward plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that covers my butt mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. So maybe I need to take some lessons from you. Yes. Because I would love to yes. increase my win rate. I would love to help. A, a, a little, I would love better. to help. Okay. You don't understand how timely this message is because mm -hmm. I'm seeing my best pushes and moves in the new york session mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now with this particular trade like i'm kind of swinging it for the week mm -hmm. so that's why i'm kind of holding on yep. to that one mm -hmm. but normally i'm just like i'm in yeah. maybe an hour or two like i'm i'm really like a scalper yep. slash intraday yep, yeah yeah too. yeah yep. so i'm in for a couple hours and then i'm out mm -hmm. um but yeah that's good information mm -hmm. now so 2020 mm -hmm. you're out you got your own apartment mm -hmm. you're trading mm -hmm. You're teaching. Mm -hmm. You're helping people actually make money. You're not just like, hey, I'm just selling a course. Like, you're actually helping mm -hmm. people make money, yep. which is awesome, mm -hmm. right? And so you're seeing this success. Mm -hmm. And then you meet this guy sitting next to you. Yes, I right? met him in 2020. Yeah. 2020. So, um, I'm sorry, 2022. 2022. Right, right. 2022, um, that's when we met. You want to go ahead and give him the story? <sighs> yeah. All right, so you winning. Like, I want to set this up real quick because okay. there's a lot of people watching right now, and they just kind of like – you know, I'm a trader and I'm locked in and it's hard to find somebody, you know, that see things the way I see it. Right. So okay. you locked in right now. Mm -hmm. Right. You doing your thing. Mm -hmm. You're not an ugly person. Mm -hmm. You a woman mm -hmm. that's financially doing mm -hmm. her thing. Mm -hmm. That's an attractive thing. I'm mm -hmm. sure a lot of guys would want to talk mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. That's right. What does Brandon do <laughs> to get your attention? Brandon, give the gems to the guys right now that's trying to. Find a woman that's driven, that's locked in into what she doing. What did you do to get her attention? How did you get her attention? Oh, man. Um, I was kind of in my own mode. I was in my own mode. Um, I was only here for another couple of days or so. I was going to head back home. I'm from Ohio. Okay. Right? So I was on the <laughs> road on the way back, and I figured I'll, you know, hang out for a few mm -hmm. the night before I go. Not really looking for anything. Cause I was in my own path at the same time, um, so we met at uh, Koyo Taco, mm -hmm. right in Wynwood, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in there, and I'll set this up too, cause it depends on who you are and where you're at in your in your path. Cause back then, like I'm coming, I, I was promoting, I was doing a lot of things before, like being a guy for sure, right? So after all of that. You know, I was just in my mode trying to get to where I'm trying to go. So here's the setup, right? So you've been in the club before. Yeah. Club is, all right, it's everybody around. I see her across the way uh, in her phone, just doing her thing. And then you have, you know, the real crazy live ones right here with you, right? So real crazy live ones all in the group and everything. And everybody's looking at me, looking at this person over here. 
if I'm the person that I was maybe a year ago, I would be over here rocking, right? But I wasn't in that space, you know what I mean? So instead, I ignored that, mm. right? And then um, on the way out, I think I ran into uh, her friend and her, just had the conversation, mm -hmm. super light, and I said, all right, cool, like, um, what are y'all about to get into, this and that. And it was it was on some, you know, I'd rather be around some solid people. Come on. For a few, you know what I mean, before I jet. I'm not even looking to do anything crazy. So I asked them what they was doing. Um, the friend wanted to go to a club or something, so I'm trying to figure out, all right, so how could we get to her to the club and then at the same time just chill and have a conversation on this side because I'm like, I see her in the background. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, it was set up that way. Um, figured that out. They had to huddle up and figure out what they was going to do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And we ended up going to the park and walking around, talking and digging in. Yeah. You know what I mean? The conversation was solid. I can let her know. Well, she can honestly say what caught her attention in that conversation. But mm -hmm. honestly, it was just me being on my path trying to figure out what I was trying to figure out and not really, you know, reaching out in that way to try to make something happen it was more so just being okay with all right cool let's 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 have some conversation and then at the same time i'm i'm not really worried either way you know what i mean i, I love it man so when did y'all figure out that y'all both trade and y'all both invest like when did so, that yeah, so, happen so as like you said as we were me and my friend were leaving the club she introduced herself to him and then i introduced myself to him I wasn't really, like, I just came out of a relationship, like, two months ago. Like, I Oh, left. you was fresh out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I yeah, yeah, that's why you was at that club. You was like, yeah. I got to I gotta get past this. Yeah, it, it was more <laughs> so, like, I just wanted to have a good time. And then um, I just mm. wanted to go out with my friend, like, you know. So I, I had left a relationship, like, two months ago. So I wasn't looking for anything, like, serious, you know. So mm -hmm. um, when I ran into him, um, he gave me his information. Like, he's so, like innovative with the stuff that he have so his phone like when he gave me his contact phone he had like what is called 10k cards so all you had to do is like scan the back of his phone and all his contact information comes up so when i saw, saw his contact information it said that he does um high ticket sales and i'm like wow because i just had spoke to someone who um actually were helping me with high ticket sales to actually go high ticket with my um, product mm -hmm. so um i was like wow that's really cool so i, I found that really intriguing and then um after we had left I was like, okay, um, well, I, 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 I had asked him, like, a couple of questions, like, because I'm a deep, like, thinker, like, I'm a Scorpio, so I'm, I'm more into the, like, the deep talks. I don't like small talk. So I'm like, I love a person that can, like, go deep with conversation with me, and we could talk about earth, we could talk about grass, we could talk about, you know, anatomies and stuff like that, spirituality, yeah. um, you know, anything like that. So I tested him, I asked him a couple of questions and stuff like that. So he checked every little list on my uh, wow. on my um paper okay and then um he was like and then he also told me that he was like top two in the world i said you was top two in the world with binary trading i said mm -hmm. sir we can talk because uh i, I don't want to talk to nobody <laughs> other than that okay if you don't trade if you don't trade i don't want to talk to you because wow. you, you're not gonna understand okay. me. you're okay. not gonna understand me while i'm in the house yelling and um saying why this market is against me you will understand that <laughs> you will <laughs> Okay. Them <laughs> sessions, crazy. So they, tell me about that. So you were options trading. Yeah, yeah pocket mm -hmm. options. So how did you get involved with that? Like, how did you get started in that? IML, right? Wow. Sure IML, <laughs> but I was there for maybe a couple months. Honestly, I was coming from the uh, sales, management, recruiting world. Correct. So they approached me on that side, right? They like yo, you a beast in this area. So you can this build the product, a team, yeah. Right? So I'm like, all right, cool. That's the product, cool. We can build a team. He told me how much I can make doing that. It wasn't really trading at that point. I'm coming from uh, casino action, baccarat numbers, probabilities for sure. And then I found the uh, HFX part of it, the high frequency. Make That's money like, in minutes. That's the sale pitch, y'all. Huh? <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> they was making so much money off that pitch, boy. Yeah. And then you can get somebody on an opportunity call and literally help them make mm -hmm. a, a couple dollars in a minute. Couple dollars in a minute. Boy, they giving you that car payment every month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, okay, solid. So um, I'm coming from uh, Baccarat. Baccarat is a binary system. You got the player and the banker. Think of it like blackjack. And instead of just hoping that you win, you can bet that the dealer is going to win too. So mm -hmm. it's 50-50 is flipping the coin. So with the 
uh, binary options, I'm like, okay, high or low, seller, it's the same type of system. And I had bought a course from somebody that is a professional Baccarat trainer. So from that, I'm like, well, if that's the case, then that's like looking at the cards face up if we're looking at the charts and stuff like that. And I yeah. can use that same system over here. So I ended up using that same system. I'm three months in or so, and in December, like, uh, I finally funded account. In November, I OD an analysis extra. Like, I would literally have uh, my phone recording the market at night, you know what I mean, sleep with that. And then pull it up in the morning, and then I'll go back to everything that, that happened. And I'll do oh, that you go in. Mm -hmm. I was on that. Wow. <clears throat> so whatever mm -hmm. I pop on, like I OD. Mm. So when I saw that, I'm like, all right, cool. Like let me find some. Let me figure this out real quick. Yeah. So um, I finally go and and fund a live account. I blew one account. It was uh maybe like a two hundred dollar account. I brought it to like seven or eight, but I took some withdrawal. So I'm like, I'm cool. Mm -hmm. Grabbed another five hundred dollar account and ended up turning that into twenty five thousand in a week, but that was just doing that probability action. So I'm like, well, if I can get accurate enough to not lose four, five, or six in a row, then I can always, you know, compound that crazy. See, Brandon like me. <laughs> see, we not perfect like you. See, mm -hmm. see, Brandon like me. Listen, I'm gonna lose, but if I can limit these <laughs> and play with my probabilities, we good. All right, go ahead, yeah, continue, could. Brandon. That's what it was. <laughs> that's, for sure. that's the game. And then, um, <laughs> man, honestly, then I went. Then I went off the deep end with that because I didn't know that they had manipulation and all of that stuff. Had no idea about that. So I'm trading on the OTC market, which is not even a real market, mm -hmm. to where they can do whatever they want. I'm thinking I'm, I'm crazy, but I'm over leveraging to the point where mm -hmm. if I lose four times, I lose my account. And I'm good with that because I'm running it up ASAP, right? And for me, I'm like, if I can get more accurate and just be 50% accurate, then I'm good. But the thing on the OTC action is that you might be correct about it three or four times, but they only might give it to you maybe like twice or so, mm. right? And if you lose them first two and then lose them other ones, then you chalk. Wow. So I'm hard-headed. So for me, I'm like, I'm going to make this work one way or another. Let me figure out how to max out my leverage and still do that because I don't want to. I don't want to be low risk. I want to do what I want to do. So that drove me crazy for a while. But at the same time, like, that's where I got introduced to trading. Um, and, again, I would go on streaks and be 100% profitable and stuff like that. But it was just like, I don't know. It was always back and forth with that. So I'm still on my journey for sure. Yeah. But I know for a fact if I just bring it on down. Yeah. Honestly, all these trades are going right in. When she introduced me to Forex, they said it wasn't no time limit. I'm used to seven seconds, yeah. 15 seconds. <laughs> Got to put that call up put in. Man, yeah. I'm like, yo, you, don't, you, can, you can hold something for a week? What you talking yeah. about? Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. have to roll it up. Roll over. Yeah. I never even. Charging thought, me all on commissions. I didn't even know rollover was a thing. Like, yeah. It was. You got the same type of setup. So now I'm in profit on the regular. We watched your, uh, your last one before, and you were talking about... This is the only industry where somebody who doesn't have a lot of money is looking at 400, 500, or 1,000 and not taking it, but would take that $100 off the floor in a second. Mm -hmm. In a second, mm -hmm. yep. I'm on the floor laughing. We, we dying, with that. Bro. It's facts. Dying. Facts. Because I'm over here like, all right, this one in the problem. Let me see how far it's going to go. Yep. Wait for it to go all the way back and then close it out with the L. I'm like, yeah. damn, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let me get into this one. Yep. This one go right in the profit because that's what I'm used to. Yep. So my whole thing was just lowering that risk and then splitting up those, you know, the high risk action. And then I built this whole system just to cradle what I wanted. So as far deep as I went into the regular trading, they, she introduced me to the computer maybe what, maybe a year ago, mm -hmm. eight yeah. months ago or so. Mm -hmm. I didn't never trade on a computer. It was just on my phone. I'm in, mm -hmm. in the one bar charts. Yeah. You just, know I mean? I'm just <laughs> squeezing and zooming in and out. <laughs> as long as I can get, right? Yeah. yeah. So I never seen the overall. Yeah. I'm like, overall, what's this? Yeah. I'm like, damn, you could do all this? Great. Then I OD'd into that. Wow. So I put into the computer everything that I would be looking for on the binary that would put it right into profit. Mm. And I'm like, well, if I could do that and have it just tell me when to pop in, when all of that happens, then I'm good. Yeah. So that's where all of that came from. And I'm like, well, if 
let me make sure the drawdown ain't like that because people don't risk a lot because the drawdown is a lot. You have to make sure that your account is good. Yeah. So me being hard headed again puts me way down this rabbit hole of trying to figure out how to have the least amount of drawdown possible <laughs> so I can max this figure out. Right. Yeah. So that got put into it. So we tested it plenty, and then now it's like super minimal drawdown and stuff like that. But the problem is. Even with all of that, your psychology is super important, too. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Come on, Regardless man. Regardless of what. Yeah. So I'm over here learning myself after doing all of this. And I'm like, mm-hmm. literally, all I got to do is press what that says. I'm going into profit, and that's everything I ask for. I can take profit whenever. That's everything I ask for. It could be a long. That's great. That's everything I ask for. But when it comes down to it, do you, do you value yourself enough to actually take that and run with it? Yeah. Or do you self-sabotage in the meantime because you don't feel like you're worth it yet yeah so i went through that thing too Mm. that was crazy Mm. right but um so i'm still in that path everything is here and i'm like man like well maybe i'll just put this on auto so i don't even got to do it (laughs) yeah so now we in that phase i'm like all right cool let it auto do it no problem i ain't gonna worry about it right so me being hard headed and being having a motor like that built all of this stuff and then mm-hmm. she's used it before as well. Numbers mm-hmm. went crazy and everything. Students are using it. Numbers went crazy and everything. I will go through a challenge in a day just using it and passing those like that. And it's all about like, all right, cool, it's all built. Just just use it how you're supposed to use it and you you straight. As a couple, like y'all mm-hmm. together. Y'all been together what it's been over a year now. Yes. Right? Over a year, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, when it's time for y'all to invest in y'all development, Mm -hmm. how do y'all have that conversation? Like, if Brandon sees something like, hey, like, bae, I see something, and I think that I need to make the investment for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or, 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 like, I need to get this technology or this knowledge so that we can better serve the people that we serve. Like... Mm -hmm. How do y'all handle that conversation? Our synchronicity is so, I mean, it's like we have like the same brain. It's nothing that he ridiculous. would say that I'd be like, no. If if it is something that he do recommend, I also contribute to what can make it better. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. never like a no, Brandon, because he's, he's so smart. Like She is. <laughs> He's no, so smart. No, <laughs> no, he's so smart. That- like I love the way like y'all blushing as y'all look at each other. Like this is <laughs> listen, this one, y'all got the characteristics of one. marriage. Like I can see it mm-hmm. already. Mm-hmm. Like like it'll like like, like, I, like I'm telling y'all. Like y'all really could. Like when she said that synergy, <laughs> yep. I'm feeling it yes. just sitting here. Like y'all really got a deep connection. Go ahead, go and, ahead. And, and, and the thing about it is that not only that. We can we can walk into any room. We can see strangers, and they will say, "Y'all look so good together. Y'all wow. need to be together." And we we are into church too, so we're so heavily that's spiritually. Right there. We're yeah. heavily <clears throat> spiritually like into each other. So we pray mm. before we do anything. Mm. Anything. If we feel like something is off, let's pray. Let's yeah. Pray. Let's pray because um, I don't want anything to knock us off of a relationship or like mentally in our mind. But if we have something that he wants to come out with, or if I have something that we want to come out with, it's always like helping each other. Okay, what can I help with? Anything mm-hmm. that he needs, I'm like, okay, what do you need on the phone? I'm going to go Google it, Google it, Google it. Yep. It's, it's times that even the, the FX Summit, <sighs> for example, we were up like three, four o'clock in the morning just working and making sure that we got our websites and everything straight. Oh, so it's, 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 it's nothing for me to help him in just the same way as and you And vice can. versa. For sure. Anything that she's trying to do, I started off just by, like, seeing what is going on on that yep. side and mm-hmm. then just pouring into yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. Right? Mm-hmm. Brand recognition. All right, cool. Videos. All right, cool. We'll do that. Yeah. Everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not even in the Forex space yet, yeah. but I'm like, you know what? Everything that I know, here you go. Wow. Pop, 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 run it up, make it even better. You know what I mean? And and off of me and seeing girl, that, I, I, I have so <clears> much, good, I have so much you know love what I mean? into what if... If you take care of me, I'll take care of you 100%. 100, what, 100 more percent. So yeah. I'm into like people like because I don't have any motives, any bad motives uh, against anyone. So if I see someone putting their all into me, I promise you I'm taking care of you. You don't have to worry about nothing. Okay? So mentally, physically, spiritually, I pour that into him and just as much as he poured into me. Even That's down beautiful. to my mom. Like, yeah, your mom took care of me in this way. Yo, 
hey mom i'm about to send you da 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 it's yep. that for anybody and everybody that walks past and mm-hmm. that karma is amazing you mm-hmm. know what i mean reciprocity that's awesome. is everything mm-hmm. that's that's awesome listen man <laughs> i wish y'all so much more happiness like for real for, for real sure. all right so like i want to get into this um so when we were at the summit and we met mm-hmm. um and you introduced yourself and you told me that you watched the podcast and you showed me your phone. Like you took out your phone. You was like, look, I made 30000 and this was today. Yeah. Um, and so talk to me about. <laughs> <laughs> and look how she said it with all that confidence. Like, yep. Yeah. Like she literally took out her phone yeah. and showed me real account, yeah. everything. Yeah. She showed me everything. So talk to me about like y'all got the computer here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So talk to me about this. Whatever it is, because I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, you explained a little bit to me, mm-hmm. but I don't remember. I'm going to be honest. Okay. So explain to me how the 30000 was made and what this is okay. you created. Okay. And how it helped you make that 30000 Yes. Explain so, it to me. Talk to me. Brilliant brain. Okay. And my brilliant brain all together. Um, it was the, the, the day before CPI. Because I used to stray away from, like, news in the beginning of my um, forest career, because I was like, because they was basically saying, you could blow your account, blow your I blow an account. Yeah, I've blown it several times. Me too. Um, so <laughs> I actually ended up seeing like, what what is the, how much is the volume? How much is the market buying up, you know, at a certain amount when CPI comes out, the consumer price index? And it comes out every like 12th or 13th of every single month. And pretty much um, what happened was that I was telling him, and remember, I was telling you the night before CPI is going to go crazy. Mm-hmm. And I was telling him what it was going to do. So when he created the sig- these signals here, the signal algo, it tells you what to do right away. Okay. So along with my brain and what he had created, I was telling him I had missed the, I actually ended up getting in the 830 uh, signal. I ended up getting in the 830 signal. It put me in a little bit late, so I guess the slippage had messed with me, so I had took took it out. Now what happens with CPI is that Whatever, if it's, for example, if it buys up at 8, 8.30, 9.30, it's going to come down and do the opposite. So I was mm-hmm. already ready. So I was telling him, I'm saying, Brandon, get ready. We about to load up. We about to load up. So we use a, <laughs> so we use a $100 lot. We use a $100 lot on US 30 and rolled it all the way down, okay? Rolled it all the way down, okay? And the signal called it out to the T. But I was already ahead, but the signal called it out to the T, told yeah. you when. You exactly are the signal, too. Yeah, ah, yeah. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> you hello. are the signal, so you got to, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, if it's you or your yeah. program, it's going to always be you. It's, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So okay. The signal told me right on, and when I say it was no drawdown, it literally put me right into profit and I rolled it all the way down and that day I made 18,000 18,000 it's on my YouTube and it's documented as well wow and pretty much um the rest of the week it kept flowing I kept doing the same thing and that's how I did the 30 the 30 the 32,000 in that week so what does this do like break this down to me all right so on this side mm-hmm. there's a few different things that I'll look for on the binary option side to be able to get into a a perfect little thing. I only got a little window, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, cool. If that's the case, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for this, and I'm looking for this. So what it does is basically it looks for all of that. It gets all the confluences, and then it'll tell you exactly when to pop into that. It's not a lagging. It tells you exactly when to pop into it, and it'll tell you before the move happens. So I might have this down on the two-minute, mm-hmm. the five-minute, the hour, the weekly. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. After all of those things happen, it'll pop off and tell you to pop in, and you can literally pop into your phone and just press it, and it's going to wiggle, 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 go. Mm-hmm. Anytime that it does. Um, I synced the training room into a place where people can pop on a Zoom and literally follow these down to the T literally follow them one to the next and this is not even the fully updated one this is on our side right okay so these are for more so like super elongated minimal drawdown type of moves so this will happen and i have this set up for the bot so they can auto execute themselves okay so imagine this going in the background this buy comes off you pop right into the buy it goes right into profit, which means you can leverage a little bit more than you would usually mm-hmm. leverage mm-hmm. on top of that. And at the same time, it's going to go for a while. So, for example, just this buy right here, it did 290 some odd pips mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right into another support. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah. I want to thank you for having us for one. Of course. I, I really, really appreciate it. And this is something that I always Truly, before I even watched your last episode, stated to him, 
I'm so thankful for your podcast because it's not about a person having to have clout to be on the podcast to give knowledge, to give their experience. Mm -hmm. So I'm so happy that you open up this door for beginner traders to be able to come. And even though I've been trading for four years, but anyone in this journey that's starting off, like, thank you. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. They about to run us out of here. <laughs> I know they coming and knock on the door and say, Calvin, that's it. But, man, <laughs> listen, this was amazing. Mm -hmm. We definitely going to do it again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just see where this, where all of this is mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. um, and see if you finally lost a trade or nope. two. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyway, it's your boy Calvin, the new trader. This mm -hmm. is the Forex Beginner Podcast. Myself, Brandon, Sierra, we look forward to running into you at the bank one day. But you cannot meet us there. You got to beat us there. When we pull up to the bank, you should be walking out. Double yes. bag on your shoulders, big smile <laughs> on your face. Uh, we believe that we all going to eat and we all going to be successful. So till next time, God bless you. Take care. <laughs> Till next time, peace.